Granted that the sun's going to make this video a little bit uh, washed out, I'm still going to try to get as close as I can without sinking down in the mud because I have a baptism this morning. And I uh, just wanted to video the kids are putting up the beaver fences around some of the trees to keep keep the beavers from chewing down and ruining their handiwork. Uh, try to shade this a little from the sun, but. Uh, I just wanted to hit that these are volunteers, you know, who are out here doing all this work. And uh, resuscitating a salmon stream is really an important undertaking and making it more viable for the waterfowl who traditionally come here. And uh, this is uh, uh, one of the assistants here. I don't know if he's digging with his paws to plant the trees, but I uh, thought it would be nice to to uh, video this to share with you folks. Well, introduce yourself. I believe you're a volunteer, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, introduce yourself to us. Hi, I'm Kirsten Duquette, and we're here tree planting, and we're putting vol guards on them and beaver guards so nothing can get at them. Uh huh. And why are we doing all this? Um, Agassiz. Mm. BC. To try to. Uh, Sort of save some of our ecology around the province. Yeah, and to support the soil so it doesn't flood. Yeah, that and uh, as I understand, you know, when uh, years ago we used to have a huge salmon run on this stream, and over the years it began to dwindle, and we know it's partly because of the uh, actually illegal and and unwise misuse of certain kinds of fertilizer that that help to um, put nutrients into the stream so that it overgrows and the salmon can't get through. Yeah. And I believe this is part of what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And the, the trees, what will they do? They'll help shade uh, for well, the salmon to make the water cooler? They help support the soil. So yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, perhaps help to return some of our waterfowl that if we used to have here, hopefully. Of course. You know, we used to have a swan nesting ground here. Yeah. And we haven't had the swans for a while. So, you know, I, I can't overestimate the, uh, the value of the work you folks are doing. Yeah. And uh, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you. As uh, you know, we've been struggling to keep our waterfowl areas open, and um, yeah, it became kind of overwhelming. So you volunteers and people who come out and do this work are the only solution that exists for it, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. So we're grateful to you for for coming out and doing this. Thank you. So thank you. Just enhance the riparian area because as soon as you start having buffers and recognize natural assets and the values they play in services for you know communities, they their buffers, their flood protection, they control you know mosquito populations. They have so many different values, and and we're trying to bring those values to light and work with nature, bringing it back to kind of a natural state as best we can. Good, and I'm so pleased to at least kind of express gratitude to these young people and to you who have come out to do this work. Oh, well, and we I'm were, rather glad you've chosen uh, our waterfront <laughs> to do it in because it's, a, it's an important issue for us and we're really grateful that uh, you folks are doing something with it. So we're grateful so. for having you allow us to do it because, yeah. uh, I mean, 90% yeah. of the water is on private lands and we need to work with landowners, willing landowners, yeah. because mm -hmm. we're the, the people that work with people, not the enforcers, the activists. Yeah. So it's the best we can do at offering a partnership with doing this is to allow it to be done. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but we're glad that we can so in some way participate. You know, it's uh, it's uh, gratifying for us. Yeah, we're happy. Yeah. So, it's a good team. It's a good uh, team. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, that contributes to the welfare and the economy of the whole province as well as just to re-enhancing our environment that, um, you know, we need to struggle so hard to preserve our environment and hopefully pass something on to the next generation, at least people my age, you know, are already thinking about what we have to pass on to the next generation and everything that can be done to, you know, re-enhance the environment is, uh, is a positive con contribution. So we're really grateful for all of the work that all you young people are doing out here. Yeah, it's, I know, uh, it would be great to get and you know more people as we go and that's sort of the thing, right, it's, as we start small, we grow yeah, yeah. and uh, people are eventually going to... No. See what we're doing and help no. out. Well, anyway, my thanks to all of you. It's, no, uh, it's great. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've just been up uh, recording some of the volunteer work going on and resuscitating the salmon stream at the front of our property that runs along the southern boundary of the property. 
and uh, waterfowl enhancement project. And these young people who are volunteering, they're all under 30. The supervisor is a little older, but not much older. And uh, she works for the uh, watershed enhancement area here. But uh, the young people are uh, all volunteers. A couple of them took off half day of work and one took off a full day of work. Uh, one of the young people that I interviewed a little bit works with um, mentally handicapped adults. And um, he has come out and volunteered. And on one occasion, uh, have taken a few of these uh, adults out so that they could do some kind of work to volunteer work and kind of enhances their lives somewhat. I'm really proud of this younger generation. Uh, first of all, you get more volunteer work. I mean, there have been studies done to show how much more volunteer work is done by this generation. And although one could, I suppose, find reasons to be negative because gangs are more well-known and things like that, at the same time, much of this younger generation is really better than previous generations, better than my generation when we were younger, and uh, I, I have a great deal of faith in them. I also appreciate the fact that they don't buy into so many of the um, prejudices, hatred, and malice of the older generation, especially the conservative and ultra-right-wing parts of the generation. And uh, when I realize that these riots in the Arab world, uh, a lot of the complaints about America are not valid. And one can't blame America for all of this. Uh, a lot of it is people have been stirred up by their ultra-conservative, ultra-right-wing clergy to go and do these riots and murders. And that's something that I think is very promising in our younger generation, that even amongst our most devout Christian young people, they still don't buy into the ultra-right-wing and conservative prejudice, hatred, and malice that dominates so much of evangelical Protestantism, and even the Orthodox Church in the southern part of the United States, where one might expect it, because there are people who have a Bible in one hand and a gun in the other, and they don't know which one they worship the most. And uh, so uh, these young people are really give me a lot of hope.